Hello, welcome back to the channel. Good to have you. Well, have you thought about how loud a manual typewriter is? Or have you thought about comparing one kind of typewriter to another in terms of how loud they are? Well, that's an interesting question. I'm sure a lot of typewriter users think about that from time to time, especially if you take your typewriters out in public. So a few months ago, uh, before our lockdown here in New Mexico, Kevin Kittle and I had gotten together at his house for a series of videos, and uh, we did a comparison between several different kinds of typewriters as far as how loud they are, and had a fun time doing it, discussing it. Let me share that with you today. Stay tuned. So our methodology for testing these typewriters, we used an audio uh, field strength or audio survey meter application on Kevin's phone that measures uh, the audio during a piece of time and will give you peak readings along with an averaging kind of reading. Now keep in mind that we were doing these measurements on his front porch, so there's a little bit of you know, traffic noise, distant noise that might throw it off. So this is not a scientific measurement by any means. We're not using an external microphone set up in an anechoic chamber or anything like that. This is just baseline kind of rudimentary comparison. But it should give us an idea of uh, the relative loudness of these various kinds of machines. We're doing a comparison of the Remington Noiseless Model Number 7, again, like we were talking about in the Boss, it was to double as a office machine. Mm. And so it sometimes came with a case and sometimes it didn't come with a case, depending on how you bought it, and how quiet it is. So to make that comparison, what we're doing is we're showing the uh, medium-sized portable to compare that with, the Olympia SM7, which I think is representative of many medium portables. Yeah. It's a wonderful machine. We have a Smith Corona a Daisy Wheel uh, typewriter. The DeVille 80. DeVille 80, which was a basic machine as far with as... With a broken things. power switch. Broken power switch, yeah, actually linkage. Linkage, the Switch yeah. is actually down in there, it does work. So this was a uh, portable machine, it is electric, um, but it's a good comparison. And then of course we have the Remington model number 7, noiseless. Yep. And that's our machine that we're really trying to compare to. And then we moved on to an ultra portable now this is a Royal Dart, which also is the same as a Royal Light, and this machine, we chose this one because it happens to be one of the quietest ultra portables that I have. We added right. Right. sound deadening material yep. inside, and it is a very quiet machine for, uh, for its design. And then we have the probably, Ringer. The Ringer, the one that's probably the quietest of all, is a Brother EP43 thermal typewriter. Yeah. It'll be extremely quiet. So we didn't use any standard machines because these are all kind of a portable yeah. design. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think we'd have any better comparison right. even with a standard right. machine. Now what we've done as far as trying to make it equal, the uh, brother is using a thermal piece of paper and it's typing only in thermal mode without a ribbon cartridge. But that's how a lot of them would be. The Royal Dart We've got two sheets of paper to give it any uh, advantage over a hard platen that it would yeah. it need. Same with the Noiseless 7, two pieces of paper. Uh, the Smith Corona DeVille 80, same thing, and also the Olympia SM7. Okay. I think we need to go do the test and see we what need happens. To do the test yeah, before we lose our light. So with that too, what we're using is a decimal meter that I put on the app, and that's just to give us a number yeah. for how light it is. Right. And so consequently, what we'll do is we'll log it. It will, and we can get the average after right. the testing for each machine. Right. Now keep in mind that we are not scientists. Right. So this isn't science, is it? Uh, well, no. it could be. It could be. It could be. I mean, we're doing sort of a scientific Sort thing. of science, we but... We don't it, have all of the variables no, in control no. because we're outside. Outside. But the advantage of being outside is right. that we're not getting any over-echoing that we would be from any particular room. If right. you're in a coffee shop or especially a sports bar or something oh, yeah. like that, oh, yeah. which they have terrible acoustics, oh, yeah. you're going to get echoing right. all over the place. So we have the sounds of cars driving around in the background. Yeah, so we have that, a lot of background yeah. noise, but we aren't getting a lot of echoing. And so we're probably going to have a baseline yeah. decibel number higher than would be if right. you were in a quiet room. Okay, so we're gonna, you're going to be typing this paragraph from the Spencerian penmanship instruction book. Right. And it's just an introductory paragraph. Okay. And then we'll see how it is. Go for and it. So we'll see what happens. Okay. 
Okay, so it looks like our average decibels was 45.1 is the average. And, and then, the peak decibel average is 74.6. So that's on the Olympia SM7. Yep. All right. Now let's go on to the Smith Corona DeVille 80 Daisy Wheel. Average is 44.4, and the peak average is 71.8. The peak is actually lower. The peak is lower. It, it's a yeah. bit quieter than yeah. the SM7. Yeah. But it's a different kind of sound also. It's a very, very different type of sound. Okay, so now we go to the noiseless itself. Very close to the... Very uh, close to the daisy the, wheel. The daisy wheel, yeah. So our max... Average was 44 on yeah. that, and the peak average was 68.5. Yeah. And uh, what's interesting is you didn't hear the bell on this machine. Right. Um, occasionally, it's almost like because we've moved it around a lot, the bell isn't working. It will start to work eventually. It kind of yeah. all of a sudden starts yeah. working. It's just a, <laughs> one of those things. One of those things about this particular machine, you okay. weren't hearing the bell. Okay, and this is the Royal Dart. Royal Light for some other ones. This is Montgomery Ward brand as far as the uh, naming. Okay, so there we have again, 46, yeah. average is 46, and peak average peak is, average is louder. Is louder, yeah. Which is interesting. That's yeah. It was quite a quiet typewriter. Yeah, it does. You know, I think the, the shifting, this sound right here, is, is, I mean, that's not part of the noiseless typing action, but it's definitely adding to the noise of it. it adds to the noise of it, yeah. Which is interesting, right? Yeah. And I've noticed that with my another machine, the Adler is uh, quite loud and it's shifting yeah. the Adler tip up. It's, it's as loud as that is. Yeah, noiseless, you can hear it's loud and quieter. Okay, well, let's do the old thermal. Let's do about the thermal. Yeah, this so, one we're going to have to shift a little bit just because we don't have a battery compartment cover, so the batteries are very sneaky. Thirty-seven two. That's pretty darn quiet. Yeah, pretty quiet there. And the average sixty-one. Oh yeah, yeah, that's really quiet. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of good that I was doing the ty test typing too because I've got this heavy hit. Yes. So I'm making it as noisy as possible well, by just my nature of typing. Exactly. <laughs> well, what did you think of the results? I thought it was interesting. Yeah. Now uh, the noiseless is definitely really quiet. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it, and, and you know, being that it was about the same level as the Daisy Wheel typewriter, it, it surprised was, me. Surprised me. Yeah. And then the two uh, uh, manuals. Now, obviously, the SM7 was definitely the loudest. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, now, what's interesting is how quiet the uh, um, the Dart was. Oh yeah. You know, the Royal yeah. Dart. That was very quiet, with the exception that the carriage shift. So you can hear this clunking noise. The clunking noise. But we've carriage. added sound deadening to the the Dart. Yeah, right? we'd you, actually have yeah. that. I, I put in more felt as much as feasible yeah. um, around the ribbon cover right. on the inside the body. And on that typewriter, other than uh, some other typewriters have done, it really made an effect. Oh, yeah. You know, really worked well on suppressing right. some of the noises on that. Now, what did you think of the thermal typewriter? <laughs> um, it's a little getting used to. It wasn't yeah. exactly. I kind of expected to print character by character, but we hadn't yeah. quite got it set yeah. in that mode. Yeah. And so I wasn't sure when it was going to tell me what to yeah. do carriage returns. And so it was a different thing. It's pretty thing. quiet, though. Oh, it's extremely quiet. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's no <laughs> doubt that it's. If, if you want the quietest machine, and I think this is representative of pretty much every machine that it could be, is that you're going to have to go with a thermal machine. It's, there's yeah. no doubt that it's yeah. going to be the quietest. Right. That the wheel rider that I have, which is a daisy wheel machine, IBM, of course, it's not a portable. Yeah. It's going to be about the same level as this uh, uh, Smith Krona DeVille. Yeah. Right. And um, and right. so and they're they're pretty quiet machines, right? Um, but what's nice now, what I I think is really nice is that the noiseless really, if you were taking a machine to the coffee shop, which is what our yeah. example is, yeah. um, the noiseless would be a really quiet machine. It, it, would. Want to do it that. would be. I think the noiseless and the the thermal typewriter would be the two quietest. But that dart, because you've done stuff to it, right? Right. Now you know what's interesting is. 
And if you look at those daisy wheel typewriters, there's a lot of room in there to put sound deadening. Oh, absolutely. Right, you could put a lot of sound deadening in a daisy wheel. Yeah, because the body of the machine is right. bigger. There's a lot of room in there. There's a lot of room I in there. I wonder how quiet we could make that Smith Corona daisy wheel. Mm, that's an interesting thing Maybe to that'll be a project for another video, yeah. right? Now, of course, the disadvantage <laughs> to all of that, too, yeah. now where you have the advantage. Well, though we do have another daisy wheel machine, I have an Epson daisy wheel machine oh, right. that is battery operated. Oh, that's right, right. So we wouldn't have to be limited to the fact that this power one is cord. power yeah, cord. Yeah. And that would be an interesting yeah. comparison. And I wonder if it's as quiet as the Smith Corona. It's a different brand. Right. Uh, and there are a variety of different brands. So, you know, yeah. We have a, a Sharp that's going to be coming into the family right. here okay. pretty soon. That's, but I don't know if it's battery right. operated also. Well, I know the Nakajima made um, Daisy Wheel Typewriters are a little loud. Mine, my two are loud. They, especially the solenoid that hits the, the, oh, yeah. the printing is pretty clack 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 clack. Right, it has a lot of sound. So they do vary in they do vary, you yeah. know, and by brand and model. But this is an interesting comparison, Kevin. And so the noise list really is pretty noise free then. Right, and um, the, the the thing about it, you know, if you're going to where you want a manual machine. Obviously, I think the noiseless is an excellent choice. Right. Um, and the dark, the Royal Light turns out being a choice. And I know comparing that we've done uh, in the past, kind of compared the Smith Corona Skyrider to right. a Royal Light, and it was pretty quiet, um, and it already had some noise deadening material added to right, it right. from manufacturer. Now, one machine that I did is I added uh, felt to my Adler Tippa. Uh, uh -huh. It's an Adler Tippa one. And it didn't seem to make didn't, any difference didn't help at all. all. Yeah. It's still yeah. a pretty loud machine, yeah. and it's got that same clunky carriage. Yeah. That. Carriage now, thing. we started comparing other machines, let's say a Lettera 22, which has got a, a, a quieter carriage, yeah. but, it, it, but it's also a segment shift. That's right. why it's a quieter carriage. Right, right. And, so, and so that it theoretically should be a quieter machine, but then, you know, being that it's a type bar machine, it's still kind of on yeah. the noisy side. Yeah. yeah. So, and you know, the thing that this measurement, the, the sound measurement doesn't really take into account is the, the quality of the sound. Right. Like, for instance, okay, the, the Olympia SM7 might measure the loudest, but maybe it's not as objectionable. Like, I prefer the sound of the Olympia over that Smith Corona Daisy Wheel. Yes. Even though the daisy wheel supposedly was quieter. Right. Right. Yeah. And then you're getting into the aesthetics, like you yeah. said, the quality yeah. of the yeah. sound. <laughs> and that's where, you know, when you're talking about the noiseless seven in this case. Yeah. Um, historically, you look at some documents and people talk about using them and, you know, made lots and lots of noiseless typewriters just for that reason, because they were quiet in the machine. But there were a lot of people that used them office ones and portable ones that didn't like the sound because mm. it's definitely a different sound. Yeah. You don't have that clack, clack, clack of the type bar. It's kind of a thunk, thunk, thunk. It's a, it's a thunk, thunk, thunk. It's a different yeah. sound. And also it has a good feel. I, for me, it's perfectly fine, but it's a different type of feel. Yeah, that, yeah uh, that's that, right. And, it's and, different. And, and some people don't look, take to that. They think, oh, it just feels awkward or it feels weird. Yeah. You know, it's like they don't like the squishiness of an uh, Olivetti. Yeah. Uh, and they may not like the, this is not squishy, but it's not crisp. It's, right. it's different. It's its own feel. Yeah, yeah, it's its own so, thing. So, yeah. but, but that quality of sound, you're <laughs> right, you know. And to me, I, I kind of like that. I've used it in my uh, uh, office upstairs. And um, I had a complaint when I was using the uh, Godring uh, Prima, <laughs> which is a full-size typewriter. And it's got a very, I think, very pleasing sound for a full-size typewriter. And it sounds like it, but it sounds like a typewriter. Right, right. You know, it sounds like you expect it to. Yeah. And I was thinking, man, they were complaining downstairs. Man, it's noisy. We can really hear it downstairs. <laughs> yeah. So I went to the Noiseless 7, and they didn't even know I was typing. Right, right. Well, that's the thing, right? Is it's those peak transients probably that you can't really measure easily on a on a phone app that may have a lot to do with how how really it sounds, right? Right. Yeah. And then another thing to think about, and this is where you get into the audiophile yeah. part of yeah. the sound of the typewriter, is that okay, does the noiseless seven sound like it's amplified by tubes or is it a solid state <laughs> amplification? Oh no. We're not going down that <laughs> rabbit hole right now. We're gonna cut it off right here. We're not gonna discuss tubes versus solid state. <laughs> Although I think we both prefer tubes, don't you? I think we do. Yeah, but yeah. again, that's and the reason being is, is that it's a different harmonic yes. pattern. Yes. on the peak sounds. Right. And that's what the difference is. You have a different harmonic pattern yep. on the machines that sound quieter than you do on the ones that yep. may be noisier. Well, this was an interesting comparison. Um, and uh, maybe you guys have your own opinion about the sound of typewriters. What is your favorite sounding typewriter? Drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, stay safe.
Have yourselves a great day. Stay creative. Bye-bye for now.